Chapter 2, Lesson 8, Which Project? Procedure with Parameters. Learning Target. I can create and use parameters in a procedure for which project animation. Note, this project is going to be graded as an assessment, so do your 100% best. Pay attention to the video. Do not skip the steps in the video. Which project animation? Let's take a look at our which project animation. Now let's watch this video again to understand the animation. The witch is holding her magic wand. She turns to Ogre and casts a spell on Ogre. And then Ogre resizes and he says something, oh no. She does the same thing for Pixie, turns to face Pixie and casts a spell on Pixie and resizes Pixie and Pixie is happy. And she does the same thing for the troll, casts a spell and troll becomes smaller. At the end, she sits on a dragon and flies off. Now we're going to follow the four step process to create this animation. Step one, understand the problem. Let's understand the problem by identifying the objects, the characters or props needed. When we saw the animation, we know we need to have a witch, a dragon, an ogre, a pixie, a troll. And there are some other props like magic wand, Identify the actions. When we saw the animation, we were seeing that which is turning to face an object, resize, say, move. Step 2. Design. When we design a solution, the first thing we need to do is set up the scene. Now this is given to you, so you don't have to set up the initial scene. The next step is to develop a storyboard by doing a stepwise refinement. Now when we talk about this animation, we'll look for repeating actions. Now let's look on are repeating actions that's happening in the witch. When we saw our animation, we kind of saw that the witch is casting spell on each of the object. And other repeating action is the witch is changing the size of each of this object. So we have two actions that's repeating. And we have a beginning of the story where witch is holding her magic wand and being ready to cast the spell. And we have an end where the witch sits on a dragon and flies away. So now what you want to do is you want to take a look at the beginning. You want to take a look at the end and create procedures for the scene level because two or more objects are interacting. So we're going to create scene level procedures for the beginning and end. And then witch is casting spell to ogre, witch is casting spell to pixie, witch is casting spell to troll. So one action repeating three times so we can create a procedure cast spell and we can call it three times for three different objects using parameters now cast spell where do i create it do i create the object for do i create the procedure for which no which is a two-legged object so i'm going to create a procedure for biped the next repeating action is each of the object are resizing. That means changing the size. The ogre becomes small, pixie is larger, and troll is smaller. So, after the casting spell is done, they are changing in size. So, two actions that's repeating. So, we'll call cast spell three times for three objects. We'll call change thumb three times for three objects. Now that I've explained you what the animation is doing, you know that our story has a beginning where the witch is holding her magic wand and being ready. And then we have an end where the witch goes to her dragon, sits on a dragon and flies off. And then witch is casting magic and she would cast magic three times for three different objects. So we just create it once. And then the change of the size, ogre changes the size, pixie changes the size and the troll changes the size. So each object 
changes the size. So you are going to divide your storyboard into four procedures, beginning, cast magic, change the size, and step three, implement design. Now when we talk about implementing design, we want to create procedures. Now you will create a beginning procedure that would be scene level. You would create cast magic procedure with parameters that would be a biped. You would create change thumb with parameters that would be a biped procedure. You would create an end scene and do that would be a scene procedure. Now as you're creating the procedures, don't forget to do incremental development. Once your procedures are done, call the procedures in my first method to check to see if your program works correctly. Now keep one thing in mind, cast magic, you may want to call cast magic three times because the witch is casting the magic for three different objects. And also you may want to call change thumb three times because three different objects are changing the size. Step three, implement code. Now when you create procedures, you would create beginning, and end procedure in your scene superclass. Then you would create cast magic and change some procedure in your biped class. Now do not forget to add comments at the beginning of each procedure describing the action for each procedure. Also do not forget to add comments at the beginning of my first method. Student name, lesson 8, which project and date. Step 3 implement code creating procedures with parameters. Now the repeating procedures are cast magic and change thumb. So the witch is casting magic to ogre, pixie and troll. So the witch is casting magic three times for three different objects. So instead of writing instructions three times for cast magic for ogre, cast magic for pixie, cast magic for troll, we're going to create a parameter for ogre, pixie and troll and we're going to call it as witch object. So my cast magic procedure will have a parameter which object. So we can say cast magic to which object. We can supply these values when we call a procedure in my first method. Now next is change thumb. The so which is changing ogre, pixie and troll to different size. So again instead of writing this procedure three times change ogre, change pixie, change troll we can just write it once and there are three objects that I need to change the size so ogre, pixie and troll we can use a parameter for these three objects I'm going to call a parameter which object and now I need to change their size to instead of changing them to a fixed size to maybe they're resizing to half the size uh, smaller or half the size bigger so I'm going to say a parameter to what size so that means ogre resize 10 so instead of saying ogre resize 10 I'm going to say which object resize what size so I'm making my statement general using the two parameters and then each object is saying something so I'm going to create another parameter for say what or say something. Now keep in mind the parameters that I created you don't have to create the same name parameter you can create your own parameters name them but your parameter name should make sense give the name of the parameter for the use and purpose of it. So cast magic will have parameter which object and change sum will have which object what size say what because which object is changing to what size and which object is saying something. Step 4 test call procedures. Call procedures in my first method in correct sequence. Now the first thing you want to do is your story should have a beginning and then you should call cast magic three times because the witch is casting magic to ogre, the witch is casting magic to pixie and the witch is casting magic to troll. Now each of them are changing the size the witch is changing the size of the ogre, the witch is changing the size of the pixie, and the witch is changing the size of the troll. And then your story must have an end. Once your procedures are done, the first thing you would do is select my first method tab. Then you would select your scene or the object in the instance menu, which is going to be actually your witch, because your witch will have cast magic and change them. 
And the third step you would do is drag and drop the procedures into my first method in the editor area. The last step you want to do is click on run and test to see if your program works correctly or not.